Hello everyone, my name is Haytham Afifi. Today I'm going to talk about um, reinforcement learning, quality of information, quality of service, aware approach in acoustic sensor networks. Um, in the beginning, let me let me first talk about the problem at hand, and our problem is motivated by a model that's called hybrid e-learning. It's one of the upcoming or actually rising model, uprising models in the learning system, where classes take, in pl uh, take place in person with a number of students, and there are other students who join the classes uh, virtually at the same time. And to be honest, that's not the only motivation here. Uh, such uh, there are some case studies that consider adopting also these models for what we call post-corona conferences. So it's also expected that after the corona situation, you will have conferences taking place in person and some other people joining the conferences uh, virtually. And for that, um, such for these models, we need to ensure that we have good streaming. In that case, we, we are talking about low latency and good acoustic quality. Um, there are some problems with uh, these models that we need to discuss here. So if we have a speaker that's moving inside the room and there are some microphones installed in this room and these microphones are installed in a wireless uh, system. And uh, of course, they could be wired, but there are some complications there. I'm not going to go through it with the presentation for the sake of the time. But let's say that these uh, microphones are installed in a, a wireless system. And now we need to collect audio data from these microphones. Typically, someone would say, uh, let's collect the audio data from all the microphones, but we cannot do that in a wireless system because that would overutilize our um, channel capacity in that case, uh, which will cause packet losses and delay and degradate our system um, or our application. So the question that we need to answer now is which microphone should be selecting for collecting the audio data? And of course, we need to consider that the speaker is moving while talking or there are some other speakers popping, out, popping up while um, while having a conversation so different set of microphones should be selected when the movers when the speaker moves or um, when other speakers starts talking um, so in order to answer the question of which microphone should be selected uh, for collecting the audio data we need first to define the metrics to, to say if it is good or bad and in that case we have two different metrics um, first, we have the quality of service, which describes um, the network utilities, such as packet losses and delays. And these are typically typical metrics that uh, the network guys look at when designing any new standards or protocol. Um, another important metric that we need to consider here is quality of information. In our case, it's the acoustic utilities, but and in general, they describe the quality of the sense data from the sensors. In our case here, the, the sensors are the microphones and we look at things like the SNR, the coherence, the accuracy of the collected uh, information here. In order to do that, we need to do an, we need to formalize an optimization problem. And in our case here, it's a constrained optimization problem where we need to select a minimum set of microphones uh, and microphones in order to guarantee a maximum network delay and some uh, network, uh, some acoustic utility also, or for the sake of information for the acoustic application. But generally, there are two problems that arise here. First, um, calculating the acoustic and network utility could be expensive. So, if we are talking about network delay or we are talking about um, packet losses and so on. So you need to calculate that over, by averaging over time and waiting for a long time to calculate the network delay or acoustic uh, or uh, some uh, network packet losses that could cost you some time and could be expensive for solving the optimization uh, problem here. Also, the same applies for the acoustic utilities. So if you are talking about, I don't know, coherence between some microphones or some algorithm that calculates some measurement accuracy and that could be expensive uh, in terms of time and use waiting for this information to give it as an input for the optimization uh, problem is not very practical. 
also the problem at hand is an MP hard problem. So we need to maximize quality of information and select a set of microphones for that. And solving that problem is an MP hard. And each solving that problem each time a speaker starts moving or speaker changes is impossible. And for that, we need to find a faster solution. And what we are proposing here is what's uh, to solve that solution in the framework of simplified reinforcement learning. So how does it work? You have collect samples from a moving speaker. You calculate these acoustic and um, network utilities, train, give it as an input to train the agent, and then use that train agent to select the microphones. Uh, so what's the difference between that simplified reinforcement learning and the full RL? which is uh, popularly known. In any RL framework, you have a state and action and reward. And normally the action that you can, that you take in the full RL framework will have an impact on the reward and on the future state. But in the simplified RL framework, or also known as contextual multi-arm bandit, and you have an action that that takes, that takes an action and that action will impact the reward but will have no impact on the future state. And uh, such type of uh, framework is popular in recommendation systems like and that's used by YouTube and Netflix where you can recommend videos for the user to watch. And we adopt that same approach here by saying, okay, based on the position of the user or based on the user states, let's recommend which microphone should be activated. In this case, we don't have any slow calculations for uh, calculating the acoustic utilities and network utilities, because only what we need is the position of the speaker, and um, we don't need to ex explicitly calculate these utilities. Also, uh, the selection of the microphones is done now instantly, and we don't need to solve an optimization uh, problem um, in that case we just applied uh, we just used the neural network uh, to solve uh, to predict uh, microphone selection for that there are some assumptions that we consider here now first we assume that there is only one speaker talking at a time and the position of that speaker is known at least two microphones need to be selected let's say for localization or for um, stereo streaming, um, at least two microphones need to be selected, and the acoustic noise. Uh, okay, and the acoustic noise for all microphones is the same. Uh, we also assume a simplified distance-based model for, for calculating the quality of information. Of course, we can assume more uh, more uh, complex model, but we want to make it simple for the sake of simple of simulation. For our optimization, we assume two formulation. First, um, we want to maximize the quality of information under network constraints, which in that case, quality of service constraints. And for that, we set a minimum number of uh, nodes and set a maximum uh, network delay as a constraint. Another type of formulation is um, Again, maximizing quality of information, but uh, we set a tolerable uh, quality of service constraint in that case. So for that, we set a tolerable quality um, or soft constraint here with a tolerable quality of information service constraint um, can be tolerated with some uh, metric called sensitivity. Again, a quality of service constraint is um, controlled by the network delay. So let me talk about the sensitivity and the tolerance here and what does and what do they mean. Sensitivity means can be controlled by a um, parameter called W and it means or explains how um, quality of service will impact the overall quality. So if that parameter W is equal to zero, that means the quality of service has uh, no impact on the quality on the overall quality and if that um, w value is very high that means quality of service will have an impact on the overall quality 
but that brings us to the next definition, which is tolerable constraint. As you can see here, the most, not all the cases, but in most cases, we can assume that quality of information, sorry, quality of information and quality of service have um, inversely, they are inversely proportional, meaning that if you want to increase the quality of information, you probably decrease the quality of service. Think of that as our example at the beginning when we say let's activate all microphones for collecting information. So you probably maximize your quality of information, but you will degrade your quality of service because you will have packet losses and uh, high delay. So there is an inverse proportion in most cases between quality of information and quality of service. And using the W parameter here, you can say, okay, we can tolerate our quality of service a little bit in order to achieve a higher um, quality of information. But on the other hand, if the quality of service increases, so we have quality of service that's higher than our threshold here, that will have no impact on our overall quality. And that's how we explain the, the tolerance between um, quality for, uh, for quality of service in order to achieve high quality of information. But achieving quality of service higher than uh, the threshold of quality of service here it will not give, um, there is no gain for that for the overall quality. And now uh, in order to evaluate that, we need um, to answer two questions. First, will the RL have good results as that of the optimization problem? Um, and we compare that, um, we compare that two solutions um, in terms of objective one, where we have a hard constraint. And then we repeat that again uh, to see if the RL agent will learn to compromise the quality of, uh, quality of service in, for quality of information and compare the RL solution in that case with the optimization problem. Um, and for that, we do that over different positions inside our um, room and see the quality for the activated uh, microphones compared between the RL solution and the optimization problem. Um, for the, at the beginning, we assume that the speaker is static and we start looking at uh, performance achieved by the RL agent compared to the optimization model here. And we can see that over the time, the RL solution or the RL agent learns to have a solution that is uh, same as for the optimization uh, problem. Now we take uh, our problem one step further. Say let's sweep over all um, qualities that achieves from RL solution and compare that to the um, optimization problem. So in the left figure here, you can see that uh, this, this is the um, acoustic utility, or sorry, the overall quality achieved by the uh, RL solution when we have three microphones here inside the room. And we compare that quality here with the optimization problem. And we see that the difference between the two solutions is almost zero over all positions, except that some positions here, the um, we need to switch from one uh, set of microphones to another. The um, difference is very uh, small compared to 0.9 and 3.6 here. We repeat the same experiment here, but in that case, um, we take the RL solution, which learns to compromise and compare that to optimization uh, model, which does not compromise anything. And we observe that at some spots here, the RL solution learns to have high um, uh, high reward or high overall quality compared to the optimization model. But at some other points, the optimization model still achieve higher quality. But overall, they almost have the same quality also in that case, which is when you see the difference here is equal to zero. In order to summarize and conclude that and put that in a numerical uh, results, the RL and the optimization model, they have almost the same performance when we assume we have a hard to delay constraint. And we have seen that the maximum difference between the two solutions is less than 1%. But when we say let's tolerate the delay constraint here for um, using uh, RL solution and compare that 
to optimization model, we observed that the RL solution achieved 23% improvement in the quality of information. But for that, we have a degradation in quality of service that goes down to 12%. So that shows us that the RL solution, unlike a normal heuristic solution, can learn to achieve different optimization uh, uh, objectives, unlike the heuristic solution, which is designed to work only in one specific scenario. And the optimization, compared to the optimization solution, still the results that we achieve are good as the optimization problem in that case. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation. Thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you all and goodbye.